Welcome to new launches part two. I've got mostly lip products, but also some eyeshadows and a couple new items from Valentino sprinkled in there. I'm not gonna waste any time, so I'm gonna kick it off with the new MAC Squirt Plumping Gloss Stick. I got the shade Heat Sensor. These are $24 and I got mine on the MAC website, but you can now get a couple of the shades on Ulta. And these are kind of like a liquid lip balm in a melty gloss stick form. So they provide a really high shine finish. The formula for me is extremely similar to the Hourglass Fan Phantom Volumizing Glossy Bombs, but obviously these are a fraction of the price. However, they have totally different shade ranges and this bullet is bigger than the Hourglass ones. So I personally find that the Hourglass ones work better for my lip size and shape and they just align better with my shade preferences. Also the MAC Plumping Gloss Sticks have a really strong amount of menthol in them. So if you're sensitive to like plumping, tingly, cooling or burning products like I am, then just heads up on that. Personally, I just don't understand why brands put menthol in lip products, I find that menthol really dries my lips out. And it's such a bummer because I would have really, really enjoyed this formula if it hadn't been for the menthol. This has a really slight amount of that beautiful MAC vanilla fragrance that I love, and it's very sheer. These also come in shades like black, green, and blue, and you can use those either on its own or you can use them to kind of neutralize or change the way that an existing lip product looks. And with the packaging, these are really similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss lipsticks in that you can twist them up, but you can't twist them back down. So just don't over twist it, you know, don't smush too hard. Otherwise these can get a little melty and messy, but honestly, I don't think that that's an issue. So I think these are a really beautiful launch if you can handle menthol. But unfortunately for me, it's a pass because I just really don't like cooling tingly products. A recent launch that I am totally head over heels about are four new shades of the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balm line. I'm gonna play all the application footage of the four shades and I'm gonna show it without a lip liner first and then with a lip liner, I personally, feel like these might be a little bit more sheer than the original ones I tried, but you tell me. And because of that, I do prefer using these with a lip liner. And in this clip, I'm using Victoria Beckham's Lip Definer in O2. If you haven't tried the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balms, they are one of my all-time favorite lip products. If I could only pick three lip products to have for the rest of my life, it would be these, the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss Lipstick Balms, and the Fit Glow Lip Serums. That shows you just how much I think these are truly, truly a standout product. They're just $10, you can get them on the Naturium site or at Target. They have a really nice sweet smell, kind of like the original Bite Agave lip mask. And I remember reading a while ago, I think Susan Yara, the founder of Naturium, really loved the original Bite Agave lip mask like I did. So I'm not surprised that the formula and the scent is similar. You know, both products have this glass-like shine on the lips. It really softens lip lines, makes the lips look more youthful and plump. And as I'm aging and starting to notice just a little bit of lip lines on my upper lip, it is something that I do think about. And the way that these feel on the lips is just extraordinary. It's a thick lip product. And so I think that's one of the reasons why it has that glass-like shine. I always find that like thinner, more oily products really settle into lip lines. So I find these to be super flattering and they're just super comfortable as well. These are thick and cushiony. They last a really long time on the lips. They're super hydrating. They're occlusive. They're just truthfully like everything I'd ever want in a lip product. I cannot say enough good things about these. I have all four of the new shades and my favorites from the original line are Jam and Petal. I think the colors are really well thought out. The price point is great. The formula is perfection. I just think it's another 10 out of 10 from Naturium. Let's switch gears and talk about some new luxury launches. So I have the new Charlotte Tilbury Flawless, oh shit, what is it? Airbrush Flawless. It's always like a name that could be significantly shorter, but for some reason they just wanna make it hard for us. Okay, what is it? These are the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Matte Blur Liquid Lipsticks. These are $35 and you can get them on the Charlotte Tilbury website or Sephora. And they have a really thin kind of velvety liquid, but yet balmy matte lipstick formula. It is truly one of the more comfortable matte liquid lipstick formulas I've ever tried. And I also like that they have a kind of cotton candy scent to me. I always find that really pleasant because I don't like when products are unscented. I find that a lot of times it makes them smell like plastic. There are some exceptions to that rule, but I generally do prefer just a little bit of like a sweet vanilla scent. I recently tried one of the Rose Ink lip creams and this feels exactly the same. They both have that really, really thin liquid lipstick formula, but instead of, you know, the traditional liquid lipsticks that would dry down and be like, make your lips look super cracked and super dry and horrible. These do have this kind of balmy quality to them. It almost feels just like a little bit of Vaseline. It's like one of the thinnest lip products I've ever tried. It's very, very lightweight. What I also like about this formula is that it doesn't feather. So a lot of times with
with liquid lipsticks, you can find that they just settle into your lip lines or they can bleed a little bit, um, but these don't do that. And I think that's where the name the lip blur comes from. There is this kind of velvet quality to them that seems to blur the lips. So funny, the timing of launches because Lisa Eldridge also just dropped uh, a similar product to this and Rose Ink did. I always wonder like, what's going on? Is this, who's behind the scenes pulling these strings? You know, a few months ago, I feel like everyone was launching matte cream blushes. And now all of a sudden it's like matte, balmy liquid lipsticks. So I just wanna know like, who's setting those trends? Are the brands talking about it? Do people know that other brands are launching similar products? Do they do that on purpose? I don't know, it's very interesting. If anyone has worked in the beauty industry, I would love your insights into that. But anyways, these are not my favorite matte, balmy liquid lipstick formula. My favorite uh, is the Sunny's Face Lip Dips, but they still don't sell them in the US and the retailer I was using to purchase them in Los Angeles unfortunately doesn't carry them anymore. That was, in my opinion, the best matte liquid lipstick formula you could find. It's thicker, it's really truly blurring. It has this like wonderful kind of candy smell and it comes in a range of stunning shades that are nudes, that are brights, that range from light to dark. I just think Sunny's face really nailed it. And my second favorite are the M Cosmetics Velvet Lip Creams. And I'll leave a link on the screen above where I think I applied and swatched all of them. Those are also beautiful and blurring. I just only liked two shades that they launched. And that brings me to my con with these. I think that Charlotte Tilbury absolutely dropped the ball on these colors. So first you might notice that the shades Pillow Talk and Pillow Talk Medium are not included in this video. And that's because a friend who's a beauty journalist sent me these shades and she didn't tell me that she wasn't sending those shades. She kept them for herself. So unfortunately I don't have those. And if I had known that she wasn't sending them, I would have just purchased them for this video. But what are you gonna do? I did go to Sephora when I was in the Bay Area and I swatched Pillow Talk and Pillow Talk Medium. And I was very surprised. Pillow Talk is like peach. It's very strange. Does not look anything like the other Pillow Talk shades. And then Pillow Talk Medium was almost like a reddish brown, but a little bit lighter than Walk of No Shame Blur. So those would have been the two that I would have gone for, but they really didn't seem to match the existing Pillow Talk and Pillow Talk Medium line. So now let's talk about the shades that I do have. Honey Blur is just way too peach for me, um, but I'm sure that someone would really like that. Just on my cool undertones, doesn't really look good. Nude Blur is almost like a yellowy pumpkin orange. Definitely not a shade that I would ever reach for. Rose Blur is nice, but it's just very, very bright. Right? It feels very unsophisticated to me. Walk of No Shame Blur might be my favorite, but it looks nothing like the Walk of No Shame lipstick that Charlotte Tilbury already has in the, I believe, Matte Revolution line. I love that color. It's this kind of like berry brown with a little red. This is like a dark red with brown. Looks nothing like Walk of No Shame. So that really disappointed me. Then we have Flame Blur, which I think is a great shade, but if you know me, you know I don't reach for oranges. So I'm passing this to a subscriber. And then Ruby Blur, I think is fantastic. I really think they nailed it with this one, just like a perfect cool toned red. So Ruby Blur is the one that I'm going to be keeping, but I'm really never going to wear it probably like once around Christmas time. But I do like to have bright shades on hand. And as you can see today, I am getting into bright lipsticks a little bit more. So to summarize my experience with the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Blurs, fantastic formula, weird shade range. Next up, I have two products from the brand Rouge or on Instagram, they're Les Fion Rouge. Not sure which one it is, but I bought their uh, Le Balm and I have the shades BB and Cherie. I first purchased the shade Cherie because my friend Dev applied it in New York and it looked so good on her. It was just like the perfect effortless matte blurred balmy lipstick that like perfect French girl makeup and it was this beautiful kind of warm berry on her. There was like a little bit of red to it. I got it and it is fuchsia purple on me and I you know it just really goes to show how undertones play such a role in the way that makeup appears on your face or the way you know clothes or hair color or anything really appears on on your body. So unfortunately this isn't what I wanted and I'm definitely not gonna be reaching for it. Although I do think it looks good on me. I think it's pretty. I just don't wear purples. Like I would need a little bit more nuance in there. Like a, like a pinky purple or like a warm berry, a reddish berry. I just don't do like straight purples. But the formula is beautiful and I'll get to that in a second after I show you BB. And BB is the one that I really, really like and I'm gonna keep. It's this gorgeous brown shade. There might be like a hint of mauve in there. It's not just a brown, but there's also a little bit 
of warmth to it. I feel like it's the kind of shade that would look good on so many people. Definitely one I'm gonna wear a lot in the fall months for sure. These are completely fragrance free, really just has a tiny hint of like a crayon smell. And I love that when you apply these, they just go on feeling like a kind of stiffer balm. Actually, I was thinking the other day, these feel exactly like the Merit lipsticks. So if you really like the Merit lipsticks, but you, I don't know, didn't find a color that you liked, or you didn't like that the Merit lipsticks kind of like tilt and press against the side of the bullet and they get indented and then they get messy. Sometimes I have that experience with the Merit lipsticks. These don't do that. These are a little bit firmer, but I actually find them to be a hair more flattering on the lips. I think the Merit lipsticks have a little bit more translucency to them, which I actually think is a little unflattering if you're wearing brighter lipstick shades. These feel the same on the lips with that kind of like stiffer Vaseline kind of quality to them, but I like the way that they look on the lips more. So I might pick up the red shade. I forget what the name is. The red, I'm just like into reds right now, even though I, I usually don't wear reds. So, you know, we're going through a lip transformation here, but I think um, I'll pick up the red shade and this is a really, really great product. Someone had actually DM me on Instagram that they thought these are really drying and I don't have that experience at all. I just, I really, really like them and I'm excited to check out more from the brand. Next, one of my favorite brands, Coolfi is launching a shade expansion to their existing main match concealer line. They sent me a bunch of the new shades, but unfortunately none of them matched me, which was a bummer. So their existing shade, Ice Ice Berry, is still what I would use in the summertime. But their new shade, Bad Badam, is like fair to light with cool undertones. And that one does match me in terms of my cool undertones. It does have a little bit of that pink in it that I need. So I think that one's gonna match me in the winter time a little bit more. Not that I'm tanning at all, but for some reason, Reason. every summer, I guess it's just like the general, you know, light exposure with the sun being a lot stronger that, I don't know, affects my skin. I'm not so sure, but I'm trying really hard not to get any sun damage, so who knows? But if you haven't tried this concealer, it's amazing. I use it pretty much in place of foundation in the same way that I use my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer. It is a hydrating concealer. It has a glowy finish, but it's not overly wet looking for me, although I don't wear it on days when I don't want to look shiny. Like, I definitely do have to powder with this if I use it as a foundation. It does have almost a blurring quality to it, which is really nice. Not as blurring as my Fit Glow concealer, but there is a little bit of a blurring quality. It now comes in 21 shades that are all launching on July 24th. These are $26. You can get them on the Kulfi site or on Sephora, and they're vegan and cruelty-free. Previously, Ice Ice Berry was their lightest shade, but now they have four shades that are lighter than Ice Ice Berry, and they have five additional shades across the rest of the line. This also has really nice skincare ingredients. It has antioxidant-rich amla fruit extract, moisturizing saffron flower extract, hydrating rosehip extract, and licorice root extract to help soothe the skin. I do still enjoy using it under my eyes as well, but I have to mix Ice Ice Berry with Bad Badam. It's just that it is a medium coverage concealer and I prefer a medium coverage all over my face and a little bit of full coverage concealer under my eyes. That's just how I do things. But I know that the majority of you really like a medium coverage concealer. So if so, this is by far my favorite medium coverage concealer that I've ever tried. Let's talk about Make Beauty for a second. These are the Eye Shaping Stylos Cream Matte Eye Stick. They're $22 and they come in 10 shades that are all meant to mimic natural skin tones or shadows or highlights within the skin. My friend Dev sent me these four shades. She kept the cool toned ones and gave me the warm toned ones, which I'm really grateful for. The only two that I've actually tried on my eyes are Horizon and Sonar, which were the darkest shades out of these and Horizon didn't even show up on me. It's very confusing because on the website, I'll actually have my editor put in a picture here. Horizon looks looks extremely dark on the model who's wearing red lipstick, right? Like that looks like a really nice deep chocolate brown shade. But as you can see in this clip, I'm applying it and it looks exactly like my skin color. So that was a real bummer. And that's why I didn't apply the other lighter shades, which were Terrain and Cultivate. So then I took Sonar and I added that a little bit more on the lid and in the crease and under the lash line. And that did show up a little bit on my skin, but still not really much. And again, it does look darker on the model with the kind of orange lipstick on the website. So I'm just very confused. Like maybe this would be a better product for me if I tried the even darker shades. So definitely disappointed in the pigment of these. They're a super duper creamy, like creamy kind of formula to the point where you have to be so careful not to twist these up because all of my friends who own these said that they over twisted them and then they just broke right off. They're honestly like butter soft. You have to be very, very careful. So you can see that that tip was round when I just 
applied it to my hand and now it's totally angled. So these are incredibly soft. Like I'll show you here. See how that tip is almost like non-existent. And that was the shade Terrain and it looks like it would show up on my skin, but on my eyes, it, it's just my exact same skin color. So these are Terrain, Cultivate, Horizon, and Sonar. And Sonar is the only one that shows up on my eyes and it still looks incredibly light. So I don't know what the deal is, but look how creamy these are. They're so soft. And that's what I mean when you blend them, the pigment just like completely goes away. It's a very, very strange formula. They're just super, super creamy. And as you can see, they do start setting, but as you blend, they just completely blend away into like nothing. So you can see here why they don't really show up on my skin. My hand's actually lighter than my face. It just like blends away. And when I filmed the application footage for this video, I did a full wear test. And by the end of the day, it was just a creasy, messy disaster. So I think this is the case where they made something super creamy and blendable to be really beginner friendly and easy to use, but they kind of went a little bit too creamy. You know, they're breaking off, they're creasing. And so for me, I would say if you have really dry eyelids, this might work, but I'm pretty sure I have dry eyelids and I still was getting a lot of messy kind of eyeshadow looks. It also could be because I have slightly hooded eyes and that does cause more creasing. So yeah, there's probably someone who would enjoy this, but it's just unfortunately not me. I do think the shades are really beautiful, but I would probably advise you to go on the darker end of the spectrum than you think you need. And speaking of Make Beauty, I also have their new Cream Supreme High Impact Lipsticks. These are $26 for 0.6 grams or 0.021 ounces. And they come in a whopping 20 shades of lots of different super bright, super pigmented colors. So as you can see in this picture, they come in a wide range of shades. The same friend who sent me the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks also sent me these, but didn't let me know that they were keeping some of the shades. So unfortunately the shades that I probably would have really enjoyed are not in this collection. Looking at the picture, I think I would have really liked Equilibrium and the rest are just frankly not colors I would ever wear. In this picture, Atmospheric looks like it would be nice, but you'll see in the application footage, it is like super gray. Everything else is just way too bright for me. So this is another situation where I love the formula, but I just can't find a shade that I like. And we'll see, maybe I'll end up purchasing Equilibrium just to give it a shot, but I saw it on a few people and I was kind of like, eh, I might like it, I might not. And I just bought a freaking house, so I'm not really wanting to spend extra money right now. But let's talk about the formula. It is absolutely beautiful. I love that it's a slimmer bullet because I can get a really precise line given that this is so pigmented. And these are just incredibly creamy without being too thin or slippery. So it's really easy to get a precise line, like I said, and they're just creamy and comfortable, super lightweight on the lips. And despite being creamy, they're also long lasting because they are so pigmented, but they do have a little bit of grip to them. They're a beautiful formula. They've got a vanilla scent. I really, really, really like these. For me though, I just can't find a shade that I like. Take Fever Pitch, for example. It is just way too bright of a Barbie pink for me. Supernova was the one that I enjoyed the most, but it was a pretty kind of deep spiced brown. And sometimes I do reach for that in a sheer lip gloss, but as a really, really pigmented shade, it's just not something that I would reach for. So a bunch of these are going to a lovely subscriber that reached out to me. I can see a lot of people really liking New Lava, but it's kind of like a terracotta orangey red that I definitely don't tend to reach for. Based on the lip swatches, I thought I would like the shade Atmosphere but it is super, super gray, not something I think looks flattering on me. Then we have Red Rock, which is a kind of red shade, but it's more like a muted, deep, deep, dark, dusty mauve. Also not something I'd reach for. Then we have Fluorescence, which is a neon pink. Also not something I'd reach for, if you're sensing a theme here. Regenerate is a really, really, really dark purple. Very cool shade. I think, you know, people with deeper skin would really like that one. Deep Flesh is the one that I think actually actually looks horrible on me, like really bad. It's just like a light orange and that one is not, not my jam. And then we have Red Emission, which is probably my favorite. It is a slightly cool toned red. And actually let me apply a little bit right now on top of the L'Oreal matte lipstick I have, cause this is a little, little too matte for me. Yeah, this is actually basically the same shade as I'm wearing right now. So I might go ahead and keep the shade Red Emission because this is a really beautiful red, but yeah, the other colors I just don't really connect with. I don't think they look like very flattering on my cool tone skin, I do feel like a lot of these shades really cater to someone with warmer undertones or also like more olivey undertones. So yeah, just not, not my jam in terms of the shades, but again, another beautiful, beautiful formula from Make Beauty. And on that note, I have to go jump into a work meeting and I will be back whenever I'm done. Okay, it's an hour later and I'm back. Let's talk about the new Monday Born Meridium Day and Night Nourishing Lip Balm. It does not have a shade name, it doesn't seem but 
but it is a kind of like latte color. It's a kind of like caramel cream in your coffee kind of shade. And I've been wearing it for the past hour in my meeting. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit right now for some shine. This is essentially a lip oil in a squeezy tube with a little bit of a brown tint. I don't notice any scent or flavor, not that I can tell. And it has a kind of nice rubbery, like stiff rubbery squeezy tube applicator. And this is a collaboration with Bubel. And Bubel's a really cool brand. If you don't know them, they basically partner with influencers and help those influencers launch products that they've always wanted to create. For example, one of my good friends, Rudy Berry, just launched a freckle pen. She's known for her fake freckles and how natural they look and all of her natural makeup looks and she just launched a freckle pen with Bubel and this one I believe was in collaboration with Tenny Tenny Panosian. Oh cute yeah they're basically calling it an iced coffee shade I really like that. As you can see though it is very 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 sheer so I wouldn't purchase it if you are looking for something with a real punch of color but if you just want you know a tiny tiny hint of a kind of warm yellowy brown and you do love a thinner you know more kind of slippery lightweight lip oil kind of formula that has like a pretty good amount of shine then I think you'd love this. Obviously if you've been here for a while you know that I much prefer thicker lip products. I do find that lip oil formulas kind of settle into my lip line. I've been wearing this for the past hour in my meeting and it just it doesn't really feel like it does a lot for my lips and I always feel that way about super super thin products but take that with a grain of salt. If you love thin lip products then this might be something that you would really enjoy. And lastly Valentino sent me some makeup which is really interesting. Some of it's a bit of a head scratcher. So they sent some lip lipsticks that are very beautiful and they have the gorgeous red Valentino packaging, a really nice matte formula. This is going to be a little first impressions on the Valentino makeup. I just swatched on the back of my hand. I can tell that the lipstick is very, very creamy, but it's matte. And unfortunately it does have that extraordinarily strong classic L'Oreal smell, which is that strong floral perfume with a hint of fruit. So unfortunately these are not going to be for me because I cannot stand any kind of floral fragrance in lip products, but I will try them on and review the formula for you. They also sent a little mini mascara, so let me know if you'd like a review on that and I can test it out for you. And what's interesting is they sent a bunch of these little lipstick refills, and I have a couple thoughts on this. On one hand, it's cool to see a luxury brand doing refills, and so you only have to buy the packaging once, and then you just buy the refill, take this little cap off, you twist it up, and then you can plop it into the lipstick. Let's actually see how easy it is to do that. Yeah, let's see, do I just pull that out? Yeah, it just comes right out and you can swap them around and put them back in. And what's nice is if you pop it back in, then you can twist it up and down. So let's see how the formula is. Very, very creamy. It's matte, nice amount of pigment. I'm currently going through the Tretinoin Purge right now. So my skin looks a little gnarly, but that's okay, it's life. So this is 108A, I think it's a beautiful shade. I would describe it as a very light rose, a little bit beigey, kind of a nice nude if you have fair to light skin. Oh no, it fell out. That's what I get worried about with refillable packaging. Maybe it just wasn't clicked in there enough. Now we have 112R, that's like that original Kylie Jenner shade, you know what I mean? So that's 112R, a nice kind of medium mauve. Next up we have 111A. Ooh, mm, that's a nice red. And I think you can see with this formula, it is so smooth, so easy to apply. It's pigmented and it's creamy, but there's also grip to it. It's not too slippery. This is a fantastic matte lip formula. I like all three of the Valentino shades so far, and I can definitely see myself wearing this one in the fall and winter months. Next up we have 22R. Okay, is that not the same thing as I was wearing in the L'Oreal line? Let's check. Valentino, L'Oreal. Okay, you know what? I can see that they are actually a little bit different. So this is the Valentino, and you can see that it has some shine to it. That's 22R. This is the L'Oreal, and you can see that there is a little bit of shine, but it's more matte and a little bit more orangey. But damn, these feel really similar on the lips. So this one is 22R, and I'm actually very excited to say that the scent does fade as it's on your lips. So it's going away. I can definitely see myself reaching for this formula now. Even though I don't like the experience of the scent at first, it does dissipate. Next, they sent me a mini lipstick in 107 a. So this is 107A, kind of a like a, a deeper reddish brown. There's also, I feel like there's a little bit of a cool tone quality to it as well. It's very interesting. Oh, and then I got a repeat of 107A. So don't need to open that. I'm going to send that to a follower. And lastly from Valentino, they sent me this multi-purpose glitter and it said it was a lip and cheek glitter. It is essentially just, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just loose glitter in a pot and you're supposed to put it on your cheeks and your lips, but 
I would only want to put it on my eyes. So let's see what it looks like on the back of my hand first. Yeah, I wouldn't put this on my cheeks. I'm confused, nor my lips. So you can see it here. It's a very coppery, rosy pink, loose glitter. So let me know if you want me to go into more detail about this. I could do a whole Valentino beauty review if you want. Let's just talk about the minis and the refillable packaging for a second here. So these do feel nice and heavy. I will say that it's really nice. You know, if you're paying luxury prices, I want my makeup to feel like it is weighted gold. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I do think that the design is absolutely beautiful. That Valentino red is just stunning. The only thing is it does feel quite cheap. Like it just feels like typical kind of like cheap lipstick packaging, just your standard like thin plastic, but it feels heavy. So that's nice. And it mostly comes from the bottom of the bullet. So I think that refillable packaging works if you're going to be using something many, many, many times. I'm going to put a reel linked on the screen above by Charlotte. Oh shit. What's her name? Her Instagram handle is Charlotte Parlor, but her name's Charlotte Palermino. She's the founder of Do Skin. Yesterday, she just posted a really interesting reel about refillable packaging and how there's like this cross point where you would have to use the refillable packaging this many times in order to start counteracting the waste that the bulky refillable packaging requires. So refillable packaging itself actually creates more waste and it just matters how many times you end up buying the refillable component to basically offset that waste. For me personally, as an influencer, I would never use up a lipstick to the point where I need to get a refill. The only products I really use up are liquid lip balms. So for me, this doesn't make sense from a waste standpoint, but I could see it making more sense from a consumer standpoint as it relates to price, not wanting to pay for Valentino pricing, but really just wanting to buy all the individual lipsticks, maybe buy one case. And then as you're going out about your day in your purse, you just pop in one and then you swap it out. I could see people using it like that. And in that case, I do think that that's actually a really cool idea to help consumers save a little bit of money from a brand that is so extraordinarily expensive. But if it was done to kind of reduce waste, then it doesn't make sense unless you are you know, going through them quickly and repurchasing the lipsticks to be put in the case. So that's my little refillable lipstick soapbox. I would love to know actually, cause I only have my perspective now as an influencer, content creator, and a consumer who has always owned quite a lot of makeup, at least compared to the average consumer. What's your perspective on refillable packaging like this? Is that something that appeals to you? And if so, why? Is it pricing? Is it the sustainability aspect? What are your thoughts on that? I'm very curious because I just think it's a really interesting conversation. Also, I'm not gonna try today, but let me know. I purchased some face gems from Play Beauty. This is the brand that Boy Genius was wearing on their cowboy shoot. And I'll drop in a picture here of the close-ups of the face where they're just wearing all these incredible gems. Oh my God, it looks so good. I was gonna try to recreate it, but uh, I don't know how skilled I am. So we'll see. And Boy Genius's makeup artist said that she bought Golden Girl and Modern Muse. And then Modern Muse looks like that. And lastly, Harry Styles brand sent me some PR. It is pleasing. And they sent me this palette that I'm very interested to try. I'm going to be totally candid with you right now. I do not know how to use these colors. Like this is the opposite of a color palette <laughs> that I would wear. And then I don't know if it's saying that this bottom one is not for use on the eye area or all three of these bottom ones, but you know what? Let's just do some swatches. So this purple looks really pretty, kind of like hard to just get your finger in that one purple slot though. Cause this is like so, so, thin. Now I'll try the green. Oh, that's very creamy. That's a different formula. Then we have the gold and then the white matte. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. So the matte white on the end, not so swatchable, but that doesn't mean it's a bad product. It might be shared for a reason. I just need to do more research into the brand to understand how they want people to use these. And then you have the bright gold. The navy matte looks like it's going to be a little difficult to use, but never judge an eyeshadow by a swatch. And then the metallics do look a lot, a lot smoother and pretty easy to use. And then lastly, they sent me these universal cream pigments and you can mix them with this liquid mixing medium and you can create like paints for your eyes. So that might be how I want to wear these. There's like a gorgeous teal, a yellow and a pink. Let me know if you want me to do a review on those pleasing products. It's definitely outside my comfort zone. Those are colors that I never ever use, but if you want me to review it, I'm happy to, you know, to push myself outside my, uh, my normal little bubble <laughs> that I live in, in the makeup world. That's it. Those are all the new launches I was able to get my hands on recently. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and I hope you're having a great day.